Noah's Rant. All right, and welcome to the very first ever Noah's Rant independent episode on the flip side. For those of you that are new to the flip side, we used to add Noah's Rant to the end of every flip side episode. And what we had was a very serious episode, usually pretty good interview, uh, in-depth, spiritual, and then we would totally switch gears and have this, Noah's Rant, uh, which was very awkward. And so we're attempting to uh, compartmentalize the awkwardness into its own episode. Uh, some people like Noah's Rant. They are few and far between, a uh, special type of flip upon am I, and others don't. And so if you're one of those that don't like Noah's Rant, you're going to see these periodically show up on your podcast feed. Uh, just ignore them. Don't don't watch them. They are an attempt at humor. Keyword on the word attempt. Uh, there's no promises that any actual humor will be done. But some people love Noah's Rant. They don't know how they can get through another day, another week, another month uh, without fresh Noah's Rant material, or, or so so uh, I hear or like to think. And so we have fresh Noah's Rants for them, for you, listener. So shout out to Angry Brew. I'm wearing my Angry Brew t-shirt today, Coffee with a Punch, our show sponsor for uh, supporting the flip side and Noah's Rant. Uh, so... Today, for Noah's Rant, we are going to talk about flying. And I've been flying a lot recently, this year, uh, just for various reasons. I've flown twice already in 2023, and I'll be flying again here in a few weeks. I normally don't fly, so it's pretty abnormal. I haven't flown in a long time. And when you haven't flown in a long time and you go to fly, you notice things uh, that, that you may have not noticed otherwise. The first thing I notice is that... I am flying. That's the first thing I notice. So we're up in the clouds, and I am above the clouds, flying through the air. The, the closest thing to a, to a superhero as you can get in our day and age. If you were to explain to someone 200 years ago that there'd be this invention of flight, there's no way that they would believe you. My kids, they long to fly. I remember my first time flying. I was in college. And our track team was flying to nationals, and it was a big deal. And I looked out the window the whole time. It was like a really giant roller coaster ride. Now, when I go flying, and when everybody goes flying, we go, meh, meh, my legs hurt. I can't wait to get there. And we pay no attention to the fact that we are actually flying. Speaking of not paying attention, we also pay no attention to the flight attendants telling us what to do in case of imminent death. So listen, for real, nobody pays attention to those flight attendants, and I feel so bad for them. It has to be humiliating up there, droning on and on and on, with no one even looking at you. And the thing is, it's not like what they're saying is not important. They're saying that in case of imminent death, this is exactly what you need to do if you want any chance of survival. And everyone's like, yeah, I'm in a death. I don't care. I just, like, I want to read the, the shopping mag magazine thing that's in, that's in front of me. Uh, I have no idea where my life vest is. I have no idea what to do when that thing falls down in front of me. Uh, nobody is listening. But the, the thing, ought to, it, it ought to give us some pause that where else... Do you need those disclaimers given to you? I mean, even on something very dangerous like a roller coaster, they don't tell you what to do in case the car goes off the track. I think they all just assume the car is not going to go off the track. Imagine getting into your next Uber ride and the Uber driver gives you all of the, the escape plans to do uh, in case he or she uh, totals the car along the way. We don't have a lot of pause about flying. I, I think we should. First of all, you're getting into a long metal tube with hundreds of people. You're packed in there like sardines, and there's always somebody hacking up a lung. They do all kinds of things to you. Uh, first of all, uh, one of my flights was from Grand Rapids to Chicago, so a very short flight, and I wondered if... <laughs> This plane was so small 
This thing was like out of a museum. I swear it was from the 1960s. It had one line <laughs> on one side. The, the, the length of the row was one seat. So there, <laughs> there was one seat and then an aisle. And then the other side had two seats. And I was in the side with the one seat. As soon as you walked into the plane, you had to bend down. You couldn't stand up straight because it was so small. Let alone the the people that fly those little planes with the single propeller on them and they wobble all over the place. I I have no I have no idea how people think that that is a good idea. But back to the large flights, they 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 get you into this plane. I mean, they are packing you in. There is no they're getting as many human bodies as they can on that plane for about a thousand dollars a pop. So they put all the people in the front of the plane first that are super super rich so you already have to be pretty rich to just fly because a plane ticket probably is anywhere from 400 to a thousand dollars depending on where you're going and, and 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 certainly could be way more than that just for a regular ticket to be packed in like a sardine and then you have the people that pay even more for their seat that sit in first class and the airline conveniently puts all of them in the front of the plane so that when you, the, the normal poor person that can't afford to sit in the front of the plane, has to get onto the flight, what do you have to do? The walk of shame by the rich people. I didn't have enough money to sit where you're sitting in the nice big comfy chairs, so now you have to look at me and uh, feel like you're better than me as I walk by you. I do have to question what benefit there is to sitting in a cramped plane first, for an hour while the rest of us board. We act like getting on the flight first is the greatest thing ever, as if we're going to get to our destination before everybody else, instead of waiting in the large, spacious terminal. We're not actually going anywhere until everybody gets on the seat. <clears throat> I also love the, air, the airport itself, where you just landed from your flight. You are super cramped. You were sedentary for hours, and now you have to catch your you know, connecting flight or sit in the terminal or whatever. And what greets you in the airport is moving sidewalks and escalators. It, it's like we are trying to do as much as we can to stop you from moving all day long. Just the many, many interesting things you observe when you haven't flown in a while. Another interesting thing to observe is the smell near the bathroom. You don't want to sit near the bathroom on the plane or next to somebody with gas, which I certainly did at some <laughs> on one of those flights. And body odor. Let's let's just say uh, deodorant should be handed out and there might need to be an onboard uh, shower on the flight. So, we get up in the into the into the <laughs> into the plane. Uh, into the air, yes, it is beautiful. But for real, for real, you are thousands or tens of thousands of feet or miles. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> above, let's go with feet. Above land. If anything happened to that airplane, the thing is going down and you are going to die. Being in an airplane is a great strengthener of your faith. Because you get up there and you're like, okay, Lord, I'm yours. I'm going to die. And uh, I, I, need, I need a savior. I need a savior, Jesus. So I'm coming back to you. And I love you. I mean, those, those airline, uh, what are they called? <laughs> Flight attendants. They would be better off just sharing the gospel instead of telling us about the, uh, the thing under our seat. But they need to do it when we're up in the air. Because when you're up in the air, I mean, for real, that's not natural. You're not supposed to be up that high. And every single time I'm up in the air, I'm going, this will be the last time that I breathe on this planet. So, uh, and I don't know if anyone has seen them. Uh, this not a movie. The, the musical, Come From Away. So my wife is a big musical fan, and she goes to musicals all the time. And she went back to this one and took me along. And it was very good. It was a very good show. And I recommend that you go and see it but uh seeing that musical did not help so basically these people in a nutshell it's the story of people that were 
during 9-11, when 9-11 happened, they had to they had to land all these planes that were in the air randomly. And so a whole bunch uh, outside of U.S. airspace, I believe it was. So all these planes randomly got landed in uh, Gander, Newfoundland, in Canada. And it's a really fun, cool story. Except they landed, and there's all these planes, like, oh, I, I don't remember, dozens of planes, thousands of people on these planes. And they literally had to sit in the plane for 27 hours. So... Every time I go onto a plane now, I go, what if the next thing happens, bad, and I have to be in this plane with these people for the next 27 hours with no, you can't open the door, you can't open the window, 27 hours in this metal tube with the one bathroom. How would that bathroom even work if the plane wasn't on and you couldn't flush the bottom? All I could say is, that would be I don't think I'd make it. I don't I don't think I'd make it. I, I think I think that I would crack. I think that that would be the end of me. Also, uh, cracking, when the person in front of you puts their seat back, it's like, look, dude, I had eight inches of room before. Now I have four and a half. Thank you. I am glad you are comfortable up there. Uh, while you're relaxing, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a shoulder rub and a scalp massage because you're already laying in my lap. So uh, welcome to my personal bubble that you have you have of- <laughs> officially popped. And uh, if, if you could not be a huge jerk, uh, please put your seat back where it's supposed to go. Uh, so Noah's rant does exist to make the world a better place. So if you do have to fly and you do survive, uh, please... Don't recline your seat back for the sake of the person uh, behind you. One of my flights had a curtain that separated first class first class from the rest of us. That was awesome. I thought you don't want those peasant uh, molecules invading the uh, the the royal airspace. Uh, there was a uh, four hour flight that I had where I was about to go crazy. Uh, I thought there'd be dinner available on the plane they said they had a limited amount of these these picnic packs they had they had nothing uh once they came to me they oh we're all out and i never saw any even distributed meanwhile first class was literally getting platters of dinner served to them (laughs) oh so uh next time you fly i want you to remember I want you to remember Noah's rant. Uh, I, 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 Noah's rant exists to make the world a better place. And uh, today, the the what Noah's rant did is <laughs> it uh, it helps you not to recline your seat back when uh, when when you're you know when, to to not disadvantage uh, the person behind you. Pay attention to the flight attendants; they're people too. Uh, show them the love of Jesus by. <laughs> Make this would be great. Make eye contact with them. Take out a notebook and and write down notes of what they're saying. And even like hold your pen out, kind of like like as you're taking notes like this. If you're if you're watching, and then you hear this hand will be better. It'd be like make little gestures like this. Like oh yeah, good point. Maybe tap your face, your nose with it. <laughs> uh, treat them treat them with love. Pack yourself uh, some food, some some dinner food. And honestly, the biggest takeaway today is I hope you know Jesus because uh, you it's a very good chance you're going to die uh, the next time you fly in one of those things because that is just not safe. That is not a safe activity uh, to be that high in the air in a giant metal tube just made of manufactured things. Stuff goes – manufactured things break all the time. Like My toaster just broke. My fridge broke. I mean stuff breaks. I'd rather stuff break in my kitchen than 10,000 feet off the ground. So just hope you know Jesus. He loves you. He died on the cross for your sins. He wants to spend eternity with you. Commit your life to him. Ask him to forgive you of your sins, and he will. And then uh, if and when that plane goes down, um, he'll, you'll, you'll be with him forever. And it'll all be thanks to Noah's rant. So that concludes the very first ever independent episode of Noah's rant brought to you by Angry Brew. Uh <laughs> We'll uh, we'll keep we'll keep trying these, see how they go, 
it will we'll uh we'll have more long form episodes to you soon more five minute flips to you soon and i will see you next time on the flip side <laughs>